then the girl, she come from way down south. Now she's so sweet, the honeybees will swarm around her mouth. Told me that she loved me, and I thought my time had come when she threw her arms around me like a grapevine around a gum. Get along home, get along home. Get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you someday. Get along home, get along home, get along home, Cindy, Cindy, I'll marry you someday. everybody. Welcome to OnlineLessonVideos.com. I'm Ryan Spearman. This is Volume 8 of the Clawhammer Banjo Series, and today we're going to learn Cindy. So grab your banjos and let's make some noise. So today we're going to learn Cindy, and this is going to be at least a partial departure from what we've done so far. So far we've just done fiddle tunes, uh, traditional square dance style tunes, which is a very conventional use of the claw hammer banjo, what most people would consider the uh, traditional application for the claw hammer banjo. Now, we're not going to make a big departure. We're going to do a fiddle tune known as Cindy, which is also um, a song, as you heard me sing and play in the introduction. So this is one that you could do in a performance setting, uh, as well as just as, a, as an old-time fiddle dance tune. And as far as courting along, playing behind singing, uh, whether it be your own or somebody else's, that's uh, beyond the scope of this particular lesson, but something we will cover in the future. But we just wanted to let you know and kind of demonstrate the uh, uh, this tune in action as a song. And then I'm going to go ahead and teach it to you, and you can play it with a fiddler as a dance tune, or you can use it as a performance piece as well. So let's get into the music side of this thing. Um, starting out on the first measure, right away we're going to have a new technique to talk about. And uh, I don't know of any official standardized terminology for this technique here, um, but I like to call it ghost noting or phantom stroking, whatever, depending on the mood I'm in. 
Um, and you'll notice when I notate this on the tablature, it's going to be notated with a note in parentheses. And the parentheses hopefully are self-explanatory. It's, it's going to be a note that's optional in the sense that it can be missed. You can miss that note with your right hand and continue on with your normal rhythmic function and everything will work out just fine. Uh, the other option is, and what happens a lot of times in real time playing using this technique is that um, the note is still played, but in a very non-committal way. You're not putting any emphasis on it, and it's maybe just barely being touched as opposed to the rest of the notes. So the parentheses indicate a severe de-emphasis of a particular note, whether it be just barely articulating it or missing it altogether with your right hand on purpose. Um, so this phantom stroking is might give you a little trouble for a second or two, but as soon as you get the hang of it, you'll understand that it's not much different than what we've been doing. It's just a very slight variation on what we've got going on. Let's look at the first measure. Um, at first, let's ignore the ghost note. Let's just play it like a straight measure. Um, and, and for the record, you can play this whole arrangement and you can ignore the parentheses notes, you can ignore the ghost notes and the phantom strokes and play a perfectly good rendition of Cindy. But the uh, ghost strokes are there in order for you to get acquainted with this new technique and experiment with it on your own. So we're going to play the first measure straight through, ignoring the parentheses. Notice we have a basic strum, followed by a double thumb. I'm going to start adding more of this double thumbing to my arrangements as it represents more of a, my general mode of playing. Um, let's address the ghost note, and then this should take care of you for the rest of the arrangement. Uh, the first example I'll do is I'll simply miss that note. Now my right hand's going to keep on with the same motions as if I was playing a regular basic strum, boom chicka. But as you see, when I do it slowly and deliberately, it's missing that second note. When we speed it up a little, you notice what that does is it really allows us basically lets the first note ring out for another half of beat. So it's basically like we're playing the first note as if it was a dotted quarter note. Um, which would be difficult to do doing the standard boom chicka strum because we're, we're really locked into the downbeats. Um, so that's how we do that, just a little miss. Now, like I said, sometimes in actual application, you might actually hit that note very lightly um, on accident, or you just might do an extreme de-emphasis of that note, and that works fine as well. So one more time, I'll do that first measure for you, and I'll, I'll miss the ghost note. And moving on to the second measure, we're going to keep, I like to slide into that fifth fret for the first measure phrase. And then